in a popular village on the outskirts of Lagos, lived Aisha, a young woman who had just given birth to twin daughters, who she named Zara and Leila. Although life was tough, Aisha was determined to give her children the best she could offer. The twins were her world, and she nurtured the dreams of a bright future for them, despite their humble beginnings. But one tragic night changed everything. While she nursed her babies, the charcoal pot she had used for warming up the room caught a piece of cloth and fire broke out in their small home, rapidly consuming everything in its path. When Aisha noticed, she fought desperately to save her daughters, but the flames were too fierce. She lost consciousness as she tried to shield her babies. When she woke up in the hospital, devastating news awaited her. One of her daughters, Zara, had perished in the fire, and the other, Leila, survived but was left with severe scars on her face and body. Aisha's grief was immeasurable. She wept for Zara's life, who had been cut short, and for Leila, who now bore the physical marks of that horrific night. If only she could go back in time and not put on the charcoal stove, she thought as she wept bitterly. But amidst her sorrows, Aisha made a solemn vow. She will do everything in her power to protect and provide for Leila, her last surviving child. But what Aisha didn't know was that Sarah hadn't died. A corrupt nurse, seeing an opportunity for personal gain, had secretly picked Zara because she was only scarred on the back and sold her to a wealthy but childless couple named the Tankos. And Aisha was left to grieve a child she believed was gone forever. As years passed, Aisha worked tirelessly to give Leila a better life, providing all her needs and saving every penny she could put away for her daughter's high school education in a special jar. Despite their struggles, Aisha spared no effort in giving her daughter a good life and showing her that she was loved. On her 10th birthday, she surprised her with a lovely and expensive blouse. Leila was thrilled and cherished the gift, but even more, she cherished her mother, who always tried to put a smile on her face. But just when it seemed like everything was going well, and their hard work was about to pay off, disaster struck again. Someone broke into their home and stole all the money Aisha had painstakingly saved for Leila's schooling. The loss was devastating and Aisha wept bitterly, her heart heavy with the weight of yet another cruel twist of fate. Leila watched helplessly and heartbroken as her mother drowned in sorrows. She wanted desperately to help her mother to stop the tears, but she didn't know how. But Aisha's spirit was not easily broken. The next day, she and Leila wiped their tears and started again. Aisha took on even more work, laboring late into the night and early in the mornings, selling whatever she could to make ends meet. And her daughter now saw a golden opportunity to help her mother and she assisted her day and night without complaint. Her mother's dedication did not go unnoticed. Mr. Okonkwo, a regular customer at her store, was struck by her relentless work ethic. You are always the first to arrive and the last to leave, Mr. Okonkwo remarked one day. Why do you work so hard? Are your children that many? Aisha's eyes showed exhaustion, but she managed to smile. I have just one beautiful daughter, she replied, but I want her to have a good life. Well, you are doing a good job, 
I hope she makes you proud, Mr. Okonkwo said with an encouraging smile as he paid for his items and left her store. Meanwhile, Leila, despite the hardships, grew into a bright and resilient young girl. She joined her mother in her efforts, helping to hawk goods in the more affluent parts of town. Leila, with her fire-scarred face, bright jovial personality and superb work ethic was hard to ignore. Everyone noticed her and so she always made sales. One day, while selling items, her scarred face caught the attention of a wealthy man who was intrigued by how diligent she was. As he struck up a conversation with her, he noticed how well-spoken and bright she was, despite her humble appearance. Why are you always hawking here? The man asked. Don't you go to school? I dropped out of school to help my mother, Leila explained. But we are saving so that I can go back to school in some years' time. The man was moved by their situation and impressed by her determination. When he asked to meet her mother, Leila brought him to Aisha's store. To their surprise, the man was none other than Mr. Okonkwo, Aisha's regular customer. Deeply touched by the bond between mother and daughter, and how much effort they were putting in to make ends meet, he offered to sponsor Leila's education, not just at any school, but at one of the best institutions in the city, the same one his children attended. They couldn't believe their good fortune. They thanked him, and so Leila was enrolled at Queenston High International. When Leila arrived at her new school, she was overwhelmed by its grandeur. Everything was so different from the life she had known. Among her new classmates, one girl stood out. Regina, the queen bee of the school, who commanded attention and respect from everyone around her. Everyone who couldn't be her friend wanted to at least be in good terms with her. Lena stared at her with so much admiration. There was something about Regina that intrigued Leila beyond her status and beauty. She just couldn't explain why she constantly found herself staring at her. Village girl with the roasted face, stop staring at me. Don't bring your village behavior here. Regina sharply remarked and everyone laughed. Lena was embarrassed and tried to focus on the business that brought her to this affluent environment in the first place, her studies. But as time passed, despite Regina's cold demeanor and snarky comments, Lena found herself still staring at her often. She just couldn't help it or understand why. Regina, who was not used to anyone challenging her authority, took offense to Lena's persistent gaze. Determined to put the new girl in her place, Regina planned to teach Leila a lesson she would never forget. On the day of the school's family special feast, everyone was allowed to wear what they wished, and Leila took the opportunity to wear the very special blouse her mother got for her on her 10th birthday. That same day, Regina and her clique cornered Leila after class. They demanded that she handed over her blouse in rare and cherished gifts from her mother. Leila refused and instead struggled with Regina and her clique. As they ripped it off her body, Regina's eyes fell on the burn scars on Leila's back. While the others continued to mock her, look, she is even roasted on the back too, they said. But Regina froze her anger suddenly replaced by confusion and shock. How did you get those cars? Regina demanded. But Leila refused to acknowledge or answer her. The shock was so much for Regina that she prevented the rest of the clique from continuing their assault. They gave her back her blouse and everyone went home. The next day, 
Regina approached Leila without her usual arrogance. I'm sorry about what happened yesterday, she said, her voice soft. Can you please tell me more about the marks on your back? Lena shared her story of how she and her mother were rescued from a burning house, but her twin sister didn't make it. And the marks were the skulls from the metal baby cots they were placed in. Regina listened with a growing sense of dread. When Lena finished, Regina took a deep breath and revealed the scars on her back, identical to Lena's. No one had ever been able to explain them to her, and after a while, she stopped asking and assumed they were bet marks. The two girls stared at each other, the truth slowly dawning on them. Were their twins separated by a cruel twist of fate? Determined to uncover the full story, Nena and Regina confronted their parents. Aisha initially never told Nena because she always felt guilty for what happened that night. But when she heard the news, she was heartbroken to learn that Zara, who was now named Regina, had been alive all these years. The Tankos, on the other hand, never told Regina about her past because they feared she might go looking for her birth relatives and abandon them. As Regina confronted her parents, demanded to know the truth, Mrs. Tanko, her mother, was taken aback by Regina's sudden outburst. But when she saw the anguish in her daughter's eyes, she knew the time for secrets had ended. She told Regina the story of how they had adopted her from a nurse who claimed that her birth mother had died in a fire, leaving behind only one surviving child. As Regina shared her findings with them, they were horrified to discover that they had unwittingly adopted a stolen child. The reunion between both families was emotional, filled with tears and regret for years lost. As Aisha hugged her twin girls, she felt a flood of emotions, sadness to have been separated, but joy and gratitude that her daughter was alive and well taken care of. Regina was glad to see her birth mother and gain a sister too but felt terrible for mocking someone she didn't know was her sister, for a situation that would have easily been her. She apologized, and they both quickly formed a deep bond, becoming inseparable as they navigated their new reality. Regina, once the queen bee and bully of the school, softened, her heart opened by the truth of her origins, and the love of her newfound family. Regina's parents, the Tankos, launched an investigation into the hospital where Zara was gotten from. It was revealed that the hospital had been involved in illegal activities, including the sale of children to unsuspecting couples. The nurse who had facilitated the sale of Zara was arrested and the hospital was shut down. The twins' reunion brought immense joy to both Aisha and the Tankos, who now became a family united by their love for the girls. Lena and Regina grew up together, now having two kind, loving families, sharing their dreams and supporting each other through life's challenges. They advanced to the university and graduated with honors and both started their legal practice. They made their parents proud and made many investments in the name of their mother so that she only had to work if she wanted to, lifting her out of poverty and into a life of comfort and abundance. Aisha's love for her daughter and determination to give her a better life ended up opening big doors for her When life threw her challenge after challenge, she never gave up. And as she was willing to help herself, the universe cooperated in bringing good to her.
Her daughter, Lena, never allowed her scarred face to limit or define her. She became as hardworking and determined as her mother, and it opened doors to her that would never have met her if she had laid down idling at home. Regina found that she easily could have been from the same background as the people she mocked. She harassed her only sister without knowing it, and this taught her to be kinder to people. What other lessons did you learn from this tale? Please share with the family in the comments. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe if you haven't. I have to go now, but remember, I appreciate you and see you on the next one.